Okay, um, so let's bring it up to Texas now. I think I know what all of our answers are going to be. We did some version of this. I think it was with the same win totals a few weeks ago for the one of the collab shows. So nine and a half for Texas. Over. Let's go over. If they don't, if they don't win ten games, Sark failed this year. Um. I, I say I did, say that I say that as a Sark fan. I think when we did this, um, you said under. Yeah, I did say under. Um, I'm changing. I'm going over, and it's kind of to put a bow on what what I um, the thing that really has been very little negative. There's very few holes on the team, and I think even if you lose to Alabama, this is still a team that I'd favor to go at least eight and one in Big 12 play, and then I'd put them at 10. If you can beat Alabama, then you, you that over is cash and easy. No chance. If Texas goes 6-3 and three in conference this year, there's major issues. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I'm going over as well. Okay. So we got – oh, wait, Tark. What, you said oh, – wait, Tark, did you say over? Of course. Yeah, okay. All right, it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is, and – Let's actually go. We're not going game by game. We're already more than an hour into this video. But money where our mouth is. We can do regular season schedule, conference play. Like, what do y'all think the season result is going to be? I think Texas goes. Do I want to say this on. <laughs> Clip it. Clip it. it. It's like my head see my head really sees it, but like I just don't want to say it. <laughs> um I'm going to say Texas goes eleven and one. Okay. But I still don't think but I just I can't it it's I think I think Texas will I just can't bet for Texas to beat Alabama. It's just no matter how much sense it makes. Um, so, but I think Texas will beat everyone else. Um, having said that, I could see them losing to Alabama and losing one conference game, and th that would keep them out of the playoff. But, okay, I, I'm going to go conservative. I'll say 10-2. and two. I'll say lose to Alabama and lose one game in conference. You shouldn't. But, but having said that, with this caveat, if you beat Alabama, I think they go eleven and one. Okay, so let's do this. You said eleven and one. Either way, eleven and one, ten and two. That means Texas is in the Big Twelve title game, like very, very likely. If, what do you if think you go ten and two and don't make the Big Twelve title game, the Big Twelve is much different than what we thought it was. Yeah, there's yeah, it's like UCF becomes a juggernaut or something or someone like that. Um. Okay, so let's do this then. If we have, I mean, either way, Big 12 title game predictions. Let's go ahead and get it out of the way now. Uh, Tarek, so who do you think Texas will play in the Big 12 title game? What do you think the result's going to be? Texas plays Kansas State. Okay. And they win. Okay. And then what do you think for, so that puts Texas at two losses, what, 11 and two? Yeah. So what do you you think New Year's six at that point? I don't. Do you think? Well, that's a guaranteed New Year's six if you win the Big Twelve. Yeah, you don't think it's going to be a two loss playoff team though. You don't think there's going to be that much chaos this year? Or uh, no, because I I I think that I I could easily see Michigan and Ohio State both getting back in, and then Georgia running yep. the table, and then I think USC will probably get that fourth spot. Texas Texas is not getting in unless they go eleven and one in the regular season. Okay. So that puts us in, what is that then? Oh my god. Uh Sugar Bowl. Yeah, that's a yep. that's about that's a that's where you should be. I mean uh, high tier SEC team. Who would you like to see us play in that? I'd like to see a Bama rematch. Oh no LSU? <laughs> That'd be crazy. No, I really I, I don't really care to play LSU to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. Do you think we do you think we win the Sugar Bowl then? So then I think I, I would love for to start to get two cracks at Alabama and beat them in the Sugar Bowl. That would be that'd be great. Okay, so you got us at twelve and two with the Sugar Bowl win. Yeah, I would say that would be a hell of a season. Um, I, I think, and, and if that happens, I think Sark gets a three three year extension. 
If we're in the sugar, if we're in the sugar bowl this year, I'll go ahead and declare this now. I ain't, I, I, I will be there. <laughs> I love New Orleans. Um, I think there's a decent chance of that happening, but all right, Shane, what, what, what you got? My prediction is almost exactly the same as Tarek's. Um, I think it's 10 and 10. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I, I hear, I hear him going on all the way, uh, all the way down to the point of Michigan and Ohio State both making it again. But uh, I think it's going to be a 10 and 2 regular season. I just can't pick Texas to go into Tuscaloosa and win that game. And then I think there's going to be one. But it's not loss. that we, it's not that you're saying they can't. It's just you can't pick them. Exactly, 100. Yeah. yeah and that's what I wrote in my preview piece a couple days ago. And I don't know who the loss is going to be yet. Definitely tune into the site and preview in each game. I will narrow it down to I think it'll come in a three game stretch um, in late October, early November when you get BYU at home, Kansas State at home, and travel to Fort Worth. I think the loss comes there. Um, when it's time to go to Dallas at 10 and 2, I think Texas beats Kansas State in the Big 12 title game. And that, that, that'll be an 11 and 2 Sugar Bowl team because I completely agree with Tarek. I think Georgia's going to run the table, and even if they lose in the SEC championship game, they're still going to be in. And I think Ohio State and Michigan will both be 11-0 and when they meet in late November. So um, you're going to have three playoff teams right there, and I don't think a two-loss Big 12 team gets in with, with what's going on around the country, whether it's USC, Florida State, Clemson, um, Alabama, even potentially LSU, something like that. So um, I think 11-2 and Sugar Bowl team, and then if you're in the Sugar Bowl, you're either probably going to play um, LSU or Alabama, uh, whoever loses in the, in you, the uh, but But do you know what would be a great game I'd love to see would be Sark versus Lane? That would be great. Yeah, well, oh. I, yeah put, it, put the faith in Quinshawn Judkins. Uh, we could also play Tennessee. <laughs> oh, I don't think Tennessee is going to be very good this year. You don't? Really? There's a lot no. of Tennessee disrespect out there this year. I will say it's interesting. They have a lot of returning I, production. I don't think Joe Milton's any good, honestly. I I I I see where you're coming from, Shane. My one caveat to that would be I think Josh Heupel can get the most out of him. Same. I so. think I think if I think if Joe Milton and Josh Heupel were paired together at UCF like four years ago, they would go eleven and one. But I think the Tennessee team in the SEC with uh, Joe Milton is more like an eight and four team. All right. Um, so wait, so you said winning the big 12 champion, did you say win or loss in the sugar bowl? Uh, uh, I don't know. It's looking so far ahead. I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's a loss in the sugar bowl. You know, I'll, I'll stray from Mark's prediction right. a little bit. So I'll go 11 and three finish out the season with a loss in the sugar bowl, but, uh, ranked inside the top 10. Okay. Oh, man. Okay, so let's see here. Well, let, let, can, can I go back on my prediction? Just one thing, uh, just to get Tarek a little revved up. I think I'm going to go loss to LSU in the Sugar Bowl, Harold <laughs> Perkins, three and a half sacks. You know, they, they, what, what, what if Quinn Ewers sits that one out and they give Arch his first start? I was home? actually thinking that, yeah. That would, <laughs> that, would, that would be such the Texas thing to do. He's like, yeah, you know, well, I'll let, we'll, we'll let Arch Mania begin now. That would be awesome. All right. Um, okay, I think Texas, I mean, I could see nine and three happening for the regular season. I could. Um, I can too. I'm straying. I, I, I mean, I'm leaning more toward 10 and two. So I think, I don't know what it is about Kansas state this season where I feel like they're a little bit too reliant on the quarterback. I think, OU, even though I do think they're overrated, I think their schedule is easy enough. And I think there's going to be enough cannibalization elsewhere in the big 12, where I could see Texas and OU, having a rematch in the Big 12 title game. That said, I think if OU plays Texas in the Big 12 title game, Texas will ransack them. Um, and then, yeah, I, at that point, I would say probably a Sugar Bowl loss because I think any of the top four teams from the SEC are all going to be like top five, top 10 caliber teams. 
So, especially with potential, like, if you think about it, right, like, at that point, you, how many players do we have going to the NFL draft? Some of those guys are going to be sitting out, whereas I don't think whoever we would play would have as many guys sitting out. I think it's like a Bijan Robinson, Rashawn Johnson situation from last year, where it's just like, I think it's too much of a handicap for us to win. So, yeah, Shane, I guess I'll stick with you then. I'm finishing 11 and three. I think 11 and three is the number I see either way. I think, I think that feels realistic. Um, okay. So 12 and two, 11 and three is where we're straying. I think that's fair. Um, you know, let's cap off the video on this. Let's, I, uh, I'm not happy with the one that I gave in my last or in our last video. Uh, let's go ahead and just rapid fire our college football playoff predictions. And then we'll end the video on that. So I'm sticking to my guns. I say LSU gets in. You know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm throwing caution to the wind. I got two SEC and two Big Ten teams in the playoff. I think that given the way things are trending right now, that that's not out of the question. I say LSU. You know what? I'll give Ohio State the one, Georgia the two, LSU the three, and Michigan the four. Particular order, I'll say Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State. No, actually, you know what? I'm not going to put Ohio State in. I'll say Georgia, Michigan, USC, and Clemson. I am I'm going uh, Georgia at the one. I'd be surprised if they don't go 12-0, and 0, and then it's just winning in Atlanta. And the two will be the winner of Michigan-Ohio State, which I – I think once again it's going to be Michigan, the running back duo, and bringing back JJ McCarthy. And then at the three, uh, I have Clemson. I think Clemson's going to win the ACC um, with 12 wins. And then at the four, I'd have Ohio State, who will be 11 and one, uh, and not have to play in a conference championship game. Okay. I, I really, really, really ideally, Michigan and Ohio State both go into their regular season meeting at 10 and one. So then like the loser of that game is like 100% out of the playoff conversation. That would be the most ideal situation uh, for like a, a national college football fan. You no, no, no. This would be the great thing would be if, if all the power five conferences go, tw go 12 and one. So then like you, you it's all equal out. record, so it's like someone actually really gets left out. That would be that's... funny considering this is the last year. Like <laughs> that's been the night nightmare scenario brought up since the college football playoff was announced and it really hasn't happened. That would be hilarious for the last year for <laughs> it to happen. So you know what, Tarek? I'm not, I'm rooting for that as well. I like that. I mean, come on, I mean before college football becomes just the NFL, I mean you might as well just have the craziest thing happen, right? Yeah, I think it'd be uh, the ACC team would be left out. I, I mean, unless it's Florida State, then if you have that LSU, I don't know. That's a long, another long rabbit hole. Yeah, because Clemson or not Clemson, Florida State will have if they get in, they're going to have to beat at least one of Clemson and LSU. More likely both, because I, I just have a hard time seeing Florida State not slip up somewhere. Florida State's the team for me that's kind of hard to judge. Here's my thing: is like I really feel like. I, I have a hard time not seeing there being two of like two schools from either the SEC or the Big Ten getting in. I'll I'll have some Kleenexes for when they beat your Bayou Bengals in Week One. Florida State. I mean, it, it could happen. They're both really solid teams, I think. But I trust their offense a lot more than I trust LSU's right now. Yeah, you just really I don't know. I'm still else. I'm still a, I'm a Jordan Travis hater. I'm uh, not anymore, but from living in Florida for so long, I was surrounded by Seminole fans, and uh, they're not fun yeah. people to be surrounded by. So, <laughs> anyway, y'all got anything else before we get going here? I'm ready. I'm ready to be back in DKR. Yeah, I'm. I'm. A, I'm appreciating the, these last couple of weeks. Like, 
you know, just really soaking it in because it feels like once college football season starts, it ends just as fast. Oh, boy. We haven't even started and you're bringing up the end. Oh, my God. What do we got? Two weeks now. Anyway, for uh, Tarek Port, Shane Black, Andrew Miller, Matt Lines, that's pretty much it. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome.